I'm Foxo. I wanted to make another video on using Alondrechia's air normals and how to go about doing that because there is one habit that I see a lot of new Alondrechia players fall into that I would not recommend. And it's not the most intuitive thing, but it's that a salt is not very good for Londrekia. On offense, in neutral, there are exceptions, but for the most part, there is almost always a better option than a salt for you to use in his kit. This is, this is my honest reaction when I see a salt jump C used in neutral on Londrekia. So just to get into what works and what doesn't. So at any spacing other than round start, Assault Jump C will not connect. This, this thing is pretty stubby. Horizontally, it is meant for other things. And his Jump B uh, can connect from further ranges, but it's still rather stubby in its own way. It is meant as a pretty, now in this version, pretty wide cross-up. So it is good for that, but it is not very good as an assault normal. Uh, and this is one reason why, is you can't connect anything uh, unless it hits specifically in the late active frames. Then you can connect something, but you're not cracking 2.8. <laughs> so even if it does connect, you're not getting very good damage from it. And then of course his Assault Jump A does not hit Crouchers universally. I believe it's only, you know, Gordo, Waldstein, um, big body characters like that with a big crouching animation. So you're not going to do that much either. Uh, now, contrast this with a character like Wagner that has a kind of diagonal down uh, Assault Normal with her Jump C. So even out here at these ranges, you can do this and comfortably, comfortably use your Assault Normal and has no problem picking up off it. So that's all why you won't see this as much or you shouldn't see that as much. Because the things that you should be thinking about in these ranges here are J3B and in the further ranges increase C Rekka. In these further ranges, yeah, you're trying to poke like this, which is very, very hard to deal with for a lot of characters. And granted, you're only a little plus, but in this type of game, a little bit is all you need. And with a character that is already excelling in spacing traps and things like that, this can be just as threatening as uh, being plus 10 in their face. Even more so, because you can do stuff like that. And whether or not they respect the frame advantage on your J3B becomes a really good mind game to play. That, that little dash up does wonders for you, actually. So you are going to be playing around your tip J3B range, primarily. Uh, now, one of the reasons that you're doing this is because of shield. Shield's a lot more effective in this version. So uh, if I turn shield on here and set Wagner to guard, let's say I do assault JB. That is so punishable. Assault jump C is kind of, it's kind of uh, a strange case, right? Where if they shield the first hit, you are you are absolutely fine. You're you're good to go. But it is not too big of an ask to shield the second hit. And if they do, then universally you are getting a normal punished. So uh, that's not a good place for it either. Uh, at least if you get your J3B shielded at the tip, there's nothing that's punishing you from over here. So the risk reward feels much more in your favor 
to be poking from over here instead of getting blown up right here. Now, as far as JC stuff, so JC is very, very strong. So when a character blocks this, you are plus two. This means that you your A normals will beat out the opponent's own A normals, even if they are a frame faster than yours. You are a six frame character, even if you're against a five frame character. At plus two, you can still take your turn. And in this game, throws and uh, strikes, if they connect at the same time, the strike will win out. So even though throws are four frames and you're only plus two, you've got a six frame A normal, your A normal will still beat out the throw. So overall, this makes this a very safe and good situation on block. Um, but it's the way that it interacts with shield that makes it so useful. So if they shield the first hit, which is very, very difficult to do, they can throw punish you. Um, but that's a big ask for something that is totally silent. There is a more common situation that, that pops up in games all the time, which is, even when you're looking for it, this happens. We use the first hit of JC, they try and shield it, and they get crit break thrown. And that is such a big deal in this game. Getting grid, grid broken is so, so bad for you in this game, because of reasons like this uncapped concentrates and uh, not really having the ability to roll out of anything or shield anything, uh, you really, really, really don't want to get crit broken. Um, so, all this to say, instead of doing this and getting punished, you could be doing this and punishing them. I would strongly recommend doing this, because if they block, you are plus two, you go ahead and take your turn. Um, even if you do not take your turn, that it can be a, uh, a place where you can get them to throw tech, so you can, you know, backdash or rising jump C even to, to blow up their, their stand tech. Uh, things like that are really strong. Um, so it grants you the same quality of pressure, even though it is not quite as plus, while checking for this defensive option that would otherwise be really, really, really bad for you. So JC1 is very, very good. You will probably have to practice a little bit uh, the J3B. But essentially, it's just that uh, you should be buffering it after the first JC connects and holding it all the way to the bottom. Something like that. Uh, you don't want to do that. That's no good. <laughs> if that gets shielded, you'll be in a bad spot. Um, so practice this until it's consistent. So one final note about increased jump C is that even when it's shielded properly, if you do it deep, it's still plus. So if someone is being overly passive and neutral, you can do this as your way in, and as long as they don't anti-air you, you don't really have to worry about shield being a factor. You can just force your way in with a deep jump in. Now, the other thing that Assault is used for outside of just getting your turn started and uh, mixing up your opponent is going over pokes in neutral, and Assaults are much, much better universally in this game at doing that. So for example, we will have Merkaba do some 5C pressure. Let's back him up to right here. So Assault will actually clear this quite easily in this version. Uh, that's very different. So in these further ranges, you can see Rekka, but you can also use J3B after an Assault. And this is where Assault actually is relevant for this character. Because the reward here is pretty good. So this is, this is the exception. 
Uh, another matchup that I could show off would be usury help. So something like that. If you're trying to crush a low shield all the way over here, um, this is a good go-to. That can be relevant after you set one of these guys out. They get a little uh, greedy for grid and they, they show you a shield. You can crush it that way. Uh, so that is the place where you should be using Assault. There is one other place. Uh, I don't know if I would necessarily strongly recommend this. This is uh, kind of something that I prefer to do just as a knowledge check. Um, but when the opponent has CS, so that when they are trying to mash 2D in Blockstun, they get beamed. Uh, but that is still very much just a knowledge check. Just like you can check for DP inputs when uh, you go for a pressure reset. And you will sometimes catch people mashing DP in, in Blockstun. In the same way, I like to assault to catch people mashing 2D uh, when they are frozen like this. So there are still some mind games uh, unique to assault that you can engage in as Landrakia. Uh, just to go over them real quick. So when someone assaults at you, um, if you block, obviously, you're at disadvantage. If you shield, you often get a punish, uh, especially in this version. Now things are like minus eight uh, or worse. So you are encouraged to shield, and they are encouraged to bait your shield by doing some kind of empty assault into option that blows that shield up. What you can do against that is fuzzy mash. So you press a button just as they are finishing their jump, and you will either block the jump in or you will hit them for doing an empty jump, or empty assault rather. Now there's a third layer to this, which is I go to fuzzy mash and they do something that blows that up. So you can engage in all of this stuff as Landrakia. You can be the one baiting shield with empty assault like that. But the difference is that because your jump normal hits twice, the one that you actually want to use, this is a little bit more guaranteed. Rather than having to bank early on the shield, they can wait to see jump C and then shield it. So it's a little bit of a different mind game, isn't it? Uh, so overall, I would still recommend using JC1 instead. Now, you can still do things like this, or like this. Uh, you can mix up your jump-ins to your heart's content, especially when they're cornered, as long as they are not trying to dash block out. Um, the one thing that uh, Assault will give you that a jump forward will not is this instant grid gain. You can do stuff like this and just, <laughs> you know, like squish, meme on them and get some grid that way. So in summary, uh, be careful if you're ever planning on using Assault. Consider why you're using it and maybe consider doing J3B or JC1 instead. Those are much, much better options for this character. All right, peace.